I've been reviewed this Fluke 175 True RMS multimeter. This has been given to me at no cost by Fluke. Thank you very much Fluke for providing this to me and also thanks to Pomona for organising this review for me. Much appreciated. Let's get stuck into it. I'm going to put this thing through its paces. I'm going to check it on against my calibration standards here. I've got these capacitors here. I've also got my calibrator which can do DC, AC, current, resistance. So we're going to check all that stuff out and we'll see how it actually turns out, how accurate it actually is. Got some paperwork here. Here's the meter. And in here we've got some leads. We have a quick start guide, how to measure things. In case you never used the multimeter before, I suppose. I don't think I need this. I told you how to change the battery and how to change the fuses. For the change of fuses you have to take the casing apart. If you don't blow them up, you don't have to worry about it. And battery is a 9 volt battery it takes. And there's the safety information and warning stuff in multiple languages. As you always get, because you know it's a fluke and you have to be considering that these are used for industrial use. What's that can do? Put one millivolt to 600 millivolts. Point one ohms to five to fifty mega ohms, one nanofarad to ten thousand microfarad. So one nanofarad means probably only got one nanofarad resolution. One zero one milliamps to six hundred milliamps. Okay. Well, you can read it easy yourself. Don't read it one to you, but you get the idea. Hey, look, it almost looks like me. The bald spot on the back there. Um, so <laughs> there's links down below to the Fluke website. How does this happen every time? So there's links down below to the Fluke website which you should follow to go and find out more information about this unit and to like maybe read the manual and that sort of stuff. You can even purchase it from there too, I think. Fairly expensive units really, but then you are talking about professional grade equipment, so it will be more expensive, that's the nature of it. You know, it's not like hobbyist stuff. Anyway, so this is like a mid-range fluke, I suppose. There are better ones which do more. This is fairly feature-packed. Does come with batteries. So it does AC volts and hertz, DC volts and hertz, millivolts in DC. The 107 which I reviewed did millivolts and AC only. This does ohms and capacitance, sounder with diode mode, milliamps AC and DC with hertz, and amps AC and DC with hertz. It's a bit more suitable for electronics work. With the 107 which I reviewed previously, that was a bit more electrical kind of thing, where there was no DC millivolts, so you couldn't really do that sort of thing for that. And it's for electronics you want millivolts range. So, um, my cat's come to see me. So the leads that come with it, these are PVC leads, they're fairly flexible PVC leads. The temperature here right now is 25 degrees, which helps a lot with PVC. Colder the temperature, the more rigid they will be. Bear that in mind if you're going to use outside in cold temperatures, you might need to get some silicon leads instead. I think these are about 1.3 metres long, they tend to be about that long. And it's got standard probe tips, no covers on these ones, interestingly. I thought these would come with covers, interesting, don't know, anyway. Thought it'd be covers on these for the Cat 3 stuff. Cat 3000 volt, Cat 4 600 volts. That's what it rated that. So, where's the covers for the tips? Don't really care too much. I won't be using these leads on it, most likely. I'll probably change to my better leads. I've got some silicon leads I'll put on, which Pomona sent me before. So, I've talked barrel, latches in there quite nicely, kind of wedges in. There's a battery cover there, which might have a battery underneath there. No special functions on the back there mentioned, like sometimes they've got startup functions. Let's do some testing. Now I always do continuity testing using the original probes that came with the meter, give you an idea. So I'll do that first. That's basically instant. I'm getting some double triggers there because I'm going so fast. That's very fast. So I'll do my usual test, get my circuit board here and we'll stick this on the ground. That's absolutely fine. That's nice and fast. Very happy about that. That's a good one. Okay, also got diode test under the same function as well. We'll push the button there. So you got diode testing. Let's find out what voltage this thing's putting out. So here I'm going to use my Bryman, which has got the Pomona leads, which they sent me previously. What do we get? 7.2 volts on diode test. That's pretty high. That's really good, actually. You could test some zinners with it. So another thing that matters a lot to people is, including me, is the terminal spacing. So we need to make sure that these are the standard spacing apart, I think they will be. So here's another cable which Pomona sent me. Straight in, no problem at all. So let's do capacitance testing. This is my 200 picofarad cap. Plug it in. Doesn't register because this is one nanofarad resolution. And it's a shame, you know, I could have actually done a different setup here maybe. Anyway, that's what you get for this particular feature set on this meter. It's not designed for doing low capacitances. So let's go to one nanofarad. 
Yeah, no problem at all. 20 nanofarad. Yeah, that's fine. But then, you know, resolution, that means we're going to be getting something close to it anyway. It's not really going to sharpen us out by a little bit. It's not really meant for these values. And this is one microfarad and that's bang on. So capacitance looks good as far as what it can read. It's a shame it doesn't have a resolution below one nanofarad. It would have been nice if it did that, which would have made it a bit more suitable for electronics work. So it's obviously a bit more electrical bias than that way, because you know if you're doing big capacitor and stuff or that electrical work, then you know it's a bit different. But electronics obviously you want smaller values resolution. I mean, a lot of times you're not really using these smaller values anyway for things like electrolytics and what have you. Actually, let's get a big electrolytic out and have a look. So here's a 2200 microfarad electrolytic cap. It's just probe on here without touching the leads. Give it a chance to charge up fully and settle down. So 2080, let's call it 2085. Right, give us an idea. Let's sort this measures on something else. All right, let's try it on the Bryman. Giving basically the same reading. Resolution's not there. All right, let's go up to the calibrator, check it through its paces on that, and see what happens. Here we are at the calibrator on the one volt range, currently no output on DC volts over here. Let's turn the output on and see what happens. So we'll go through all the ranges on um, volts and millivolts DC first, and then we'll go to AC and come back and do that one afterwards. So let's turn the output on. Oh, look at that, one volt, perfect. That's good. 10 volts, perfect. 100 volts, perfect. And it'll see high voltage indicator over here. 200 volts, perfect. We'll just keep going up until it says no. 300 volts, perfect. 400, perfect. 500, perfect. Eight hundred. Nine hundred. One thousand. Still perfect. That's good. So let's keep it in the volts range. Go down to 100 millivolts. Still perfect. 10 millivolts. Perfect. 1 millivolt. Perfect. <laughs> this is the best one so far for this result. Okay, let's do millivolts. 1 millivolt. Perfect. Let's do 100 microvolts. Yep, it's there. You can see that. It's fine. 10 millivolts. Perfect. 100 millivolts. Perfect. That's good. I'm actually quite impressed by that. So those DC specifications, I should probably tell you what they are. I'm on the AC right now, but we'll get to that. DC spec for this is 0.15% plus two counts. Well, it was perfect accuracy on that. So yeah, 0.15, great. It was great all the way through, as you saw. And we weren't even getting the plus two counts. It's just bang on. So I'm really impressed by that. So let's check out the AC. Now the AC spec is 1% plus 3 counts from 45 hertz to 500 hertz and 2% plus 3 counts at 500 hertz to 1 kilohertz. Now right now I'm outputting nothing at 1 kilohertz <laughs> and it's reading 0.1 millivolts. It's been dropping down so I think maybe my calibrator has got a bit of residual power there and it's just leaking a little bit through. Maybe. Or it's picking up noise or something. Who knows? Maybe it's picking up radiated common mode noise or something. Who knows? But 0.1 millivolts on that range. Yeah, okay. Let's turn the power on. We've got 100 millivolts set up right now. So we'll turn the output on. It's at 1 kilohertz. So it's not its best specification, 1 kilohertz. It's supposed to be up to 500 hertz. So we're on the limit of what it's supposed to be able to do anyway. So it's said a 2% accuracy plus 3 counts at this frequency. Well, we're exceeding that. We're only 0.5% out. That's all right. So what I'm going to do is drop the frequency down to where it should be for this stuff. Let's do 500 hertz, which is a bit more in its range. So here we are, now we've got a slightly positive reading instead. But it's still only 0.4% out. Let's do 50 hertz. What have we got there? Three counts out. I mean, come on. It's, it's as good. The 100 millivolts. Let's do 10 millivolts. Look at that. Two counts out. Let's do one volt. Three counts out. What I'll do is I'll go up the voltages and then we'll come back down again with a different frequency, okay? 10 volts, 3 counts out, 100 volts, 2 counts out, 400 volts AC, almost bang on.
Got the bar guide here. This apparently updates, I think it's 40 times a second, I think I said. There you go, so it's ranged up there. There you go, two counts out still. 1000 volts, three counts out. It's fine. <laughs> this is extremely accurate, it's really good. But you can see the bar graph here jumping around. See how fast that responds? So that's really good. Okay, so it's still back up to say 500 volts. And let's increase the frequency to 500 hertz again. So there we go. It's reading a bit higher there. Eight counts out, so actually increased it a bit. 50 volts. So 100 volts. Four counts out of that frequency. 10 volts, five counts out. One volt, two counts out. 100 millivolts, about four counts out. 10 millivolts. One count out. One millivolt. So it takes time to settle. So one millivolt is one count out. That's not bad. Oh, it's freaking to zero. It's almost there, look. There we go. It's just stabilizing. So what I might do is go back to one volt. Then we'll check the frequencies and see what we can get out of that, okay? So the spec is at one kilohertz, it's supposed to be 2%. So we could have potentially like 98 here. And I was wondering what the top limit actually is. I don't think it's plus counts as well, which was plus three counts. So that's pretty much there. So, so 1.6 kilohertz. So it's exceeding the spec, really. That's good. So next, let's measure current. I had to change the probe setup I've got in here, the leads, because of obviously the jack setup on here. So I had to use individual leads, so I had to change that. So let's do DC amps first. I'm going to start off at the really low level. We're just going to see where it starts sensing and it's going to come up. It's sensing there's something there, but it's not enough to trigger properly, as you expect. Let's do 1 milliamp. There we go. That's there. 10 milliamps. Perfect, 100 milliamps, perfect, one amp, perfect. Let's go right to the top what this calibrator can do. 1.9 amps, perfect. So now I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time on milliamps, we're on milliamps DC. So I'm doing 100 microamps, you can read that just fine. Let's go down to 10 microamps, shall we? You can see that as well, excellent. Let's do one milliamp, perfect, 10 milliamps. Perfect. 100 milliamps. Perfect. So this has got a 400 milliamp limit. So 300 milliamps is perfect. 400 milliamps is perfect. Can't ask a bit of that, can you? Right now we're going to measure AC milliamps. So this is 100 microamps again. About 500 hertz. It's not seeing anything here. There's milliamps there. Next. Just showing up, there we go. As it's settling down, find the microamps, it's there, you can read it. Couldn't read the frequency before, but so the level's really low for the trigger frequency. So let's go one milliamp, absolutely fine. Let's see if we can get frequency now. Still can't get frequency yet. 10 milliamps, there we go, 10 milliamps, you can read the frequency, that's fine. And there we go, 10 milliamps, reading off by six counts. The spec for this is plus 1.5, well, 1.5% plus three counts on all ranges. So that's six counts out. So 1.5% would be like 15 counts out here. So potentially 18 counts out at that reading. It's all within spec. So 100 milliamps, that's fine. Three counts out. So let's do the same as I did before, go to the top of the range. So 400 milliamps. A couple of counts out. Might even settle down to being right. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. So let's do AC amps. I've got it set for 500 hertz still. This is just setting down. So just change ranges on it. So again on the AC, I'm seeing a bit of a ghost current here on the AC range here. Seeing a couple of counts there. So I'm not going to worry about the microamp range. I'm just going to do the milliamp range. I'll turn one milliamp on. See what brings it up. Didn't register. 10 milliamps. So 
So 10 milliamps it showed up. It took a little while to settle down though. Um, but then, you know, if you were trying to measure a milliamp, you should be on the other range anyway, really. 100 milliamps. There we go, it's getting faster now. It's got a bit more current there. That's perfect. One amp. Five counts out. That's okay. It's well within spec still. Let's crank it right up to the max. 1.906. So, again, six counts out. Still well within spec. So a test that I didn't do, which I should have done when I was over here on the volts range, is checking the frequency limits of the Hertz reading. Okay, so we're going to put up to 1 volt, so we can see the frequency, 500 Hertz, it's bang on. Let's move this over here, and we'll see what we can actually get up to. It's 5 kilohertz, you can still read that. 50 kilohertz, you can still read that. Can't read 500 kilohertz, okay, we'll drop it down. 200 kilohertz, no, still can't read that. 100. No, nope. 90. You can read 90 kilohertz there. It's got so 99, shall we? Looks like 100 kilohertz is the physical limit of what this will allow you to read. So 99, 100, it's overload. So yeah, it won't actually let you overrange on the frequency, even though it could probably capable of doing it. They've got a software limiting to 100 kilohertz. Okay, so let's check the lower end of the range. So do 100 hertz right now, bang on. 40 hertz, bang on. 20 hertz, bang on. 10 hertz, yep, yeah, bang on. Now I thought I'd just go back to doing AC voltage on this particular frequency here, and you can see it's still reading. It's actually just in spec there. So it's like 10 hertz is the bottom end of the range. So it seems appropriate I'm using my Fluke calibrator up here to demonstrate resistance. I could easily do it on the Natron. I thought I'd just show you on the Fluke. I've currently got a short on the input to the meter, which is why it's showing zero. If I pull the short off, so this is the short I was using, it's now showing 0.3 ohms, which is allowing for the cable. Now if you've got two wire, cables become a problem. If I short it on the end of the cable, getting 0.1 ohms there, right, so the cable is 0.1 ohms, and that's adding on 0.175 or so on two wire conversations. So this isn't perfect, because it, this two wire conversation is depending on what cable it's calibrated with. I uh, know it's not perfect for the cables I'm using, but it's close. We've got a slight offset here, so we'll do 1 ohm, 1.1 ohms, you're getting 1.2, that's absolutely fine. 10 ohms, or 10.1 ohms, it's getting 10.3, 10.2-ish. So two counts out, which is going to be within spec. Actually, what is the spec? So the spec below 600 ohms is 0.9% plus two counts. That's fine, that's two counts out. So, you know, it's well within spec. So 100 ohms, two counts out. 1K, this is where the lever resistance becomes less critical. So, you know, when you get to higher resistances, these basically become insignificant. We've basically got a perfect reading now. 10k, perfect. 100k, perfect. 1 meg, perfect. 10 meg, pretty much perfect. Again, when you get these high resistances, then you get other things coming to play, like noise and things like that. So right now, that's looking really good. And up here, the, the spec for this one is above 6 meg. It's 1.5% um, plus 3 counts which is an indication of the noise issues becoming you know, apparent. But still, at most it's one count out. I mean, come on, it's good. Hey Fluke, if you feel like giving me another calibrator, I won't say no, just saying. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you like multimeter review videos. I've got a big playlist of them, so check out at the end. We're not, we're not finished yet, I've got to do a teardown yet, so don't go away. But there's a playlist at the end of the video which will allow you to link to other videos I've done of multimeter reviews. I've done some other Flukes and some other other budget type meters so there's a big comparison list there I'm going to be doing so every time I do a multiple review I'll be adding it to that playlist so make sure you subscribe to see those if you want to make a choice about which multiple you want to buy let's get on with the teardown for this thing actually we haven't done a green peel yet see the screen protector still on there but that's got to come off here we go Right, let's open this beastie up. Plastic screws. Here's the battery. It's got a wired holder. It's not like a terminal. I have to unplug that. I don't like my batteries. Okay, so the battery's off. Tuck that down. And pull the casing apart now, I think. 
don't think there's any reason why we can't. It does seem to be sticking at the top here for some reason. Why is that so tight there? Here we go. Oh, there's clips. Here we go. There's clips up here. That's why. It's got a spot here for another button. The I think it's the 177 and 179, I think, have got a, um, a backlight. So that's obviously allowing for that. There's actually like a mark just here. You don't even see it in the casing where the button actually is for the backlight. So, yeah. Here's some moulding marks in case you're interested. So the, this date stamp here. So that's 2021, and over here is another date stamp where it says 9, which is September. Over here it says CAV1, which is cavity number 1, which means it's a multi-cavity tool. It means it probably makes you know, maybe 2 or 4 or 8 of these things at a time. And there's a switch mechanism. It feels really nice. And here it's sitting in the bottom housing. So this has got like a little marking on here for the off position. So it's got like a little pointer just here. Nice little detail. So a pointer right there, points to the opposition, so you know where to point it to line it up to the knob on the front panel. Nice, that's a bit of design work which someone was actually thinking about. So there's the two fuses, just here. That's what we sort of expect, decent beefy fuses in the fluke. You wouldn't get some cheap rubbish in these. So let's pull this rubber membrane off, thinking maybe there's a screw under there. Anyway, through here you can see there's a hole, which is where the backlight button would be, if you had the right membrane. So I'll just put the battery back in again, turn it on. Watch this. It has a backlight. It does actually have one. Interesting. There's a hidden screw under there. So there's a hidden screw. Now I should be able to lift the casing out, I think. Here we go. So we've got some shielding in there, there's a little sounder, that's where the buzzer is. And here's the back of the board, the button up here for doing calibration. I've got an idea about that, I haven't looked into any of that stuff. I know you can do it in case calibration. Not much to see here really on the back of it, it's just, I mean, let's look at the solder joints. Yeah, they look fine, as you'd expect. I hope I don't regret this. Right now it's a really good meter. Okay, what happens when I do this? Get it. <laughs> wow, look at that. <laughs> can you see what I can see? Look at that. It's a hair pinched in there. Free gift from whoever is making it. Look at that. There can go. Hey, but displaced the word. And there's the board. Oh, got the usual. Enhance. Enhance. Yeah, it's weird. Because the mobs down here, PTC, big ass fuses, there's a bridge rectifier there, some transistors or diodes, something down there. You've got a resistor here. If it's a resistor, that's all pushed through. Can I pop that out? There you go. It's a little shield over the resistor there. Resistor network array. Supervision things. I've used those myself. So yes, we'll put that back on, don't want to damage any of that stuff. Fluke chipset, as you'd expect. I'm going to go through the parts so you can figure them out. Okay, well, get the light on it right so I can see. Can you see that one? There you go. So I'm actually really tempted to try and find one of these membranes and install it. Now there was one on eBay. It was expensive though. It's going to cost you like 70 bucks, I think, just to get one of these membranes. It's very tempting to do that little modification. I'm sure it won't be too hard to do. Based on this moulding here, this is the same die that does both of them. So I'm sure that that could just be literally drilled out. There might even just be a plug that's in there. Might be able to push it out. Can't see. It might be a plug or it might just be an insert mark. I can't tell from this. But you could even drill it out and make it work. But yeah, I'm, ten I'm very tempted to get one. Very tempted. Let's finish putting it back together. So I think the battery cover here would have been nice to have metal inserts on these because this thing will be changing from time to time, you know, 
depending how much you use it obviously it could be a couple of times a year so you could potentially end up stripping out bits of plastic out if you're not careful now the technique for doing these so actually when you put the screws back in again this don't do, just go straight in you actually go backwards a bit so it drops into the existing thread and then you screw it in that way you're not trying to cut a new thread each time you put the screw in so that's something you should be considering for using these kinds of screws on equipment but thread inserts would have been nice and nice I can understand not doing thread inserts on the cases that shouldn't really get opened that often only when the fuses blow so it shouldn't really be an issue on that part of it I think I would have liked to have seen a different setup on there anyway let's see if it still turns on it does hey we still got the display it works so looks like I didn't break anything so don't forget to click like and subscribe if you haven't seen these videos before thanks much again to Fluke and Pomona for sending this to me very much appreciated don't forget to check out the playlist at the end so I've got playlist there there's a playlist there, there's a subscribe link here, and a Patreon support link there. Go and check those out. If you want to help support the channel, help me to get more equipment. Bye.